ang sabi sa akin ng aking ama. The only advice I can give you, live with honor and follow your conscience. There is no greater nation on earth than our motherland. No greater people than our own. Serve them with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. Son, the ball is now in your hands. On a day like this, Federico Lassa would rather tend to his farm or visit his son Jesus at the cemetery. But today, Capedring is out in the streets marching, protesting, demanding justice for his dead son. Jesus was one of those who died during the violent dispersal by the police and military of a strike in Hacienda Luisita on November 16, 2004. The father could still remember the last words of the son. Although Capedring and the other farmers and workers of Hacienda Luisita and the Central Azucarera de Tarlac have not directly blamed Senator Benigno Noynoy Aquino III for what has come to be known as the Hacienda Luisita massacre, they are convinced that he too should answer for it. Itong lugar na ito, itong Hacienda, private yan ano? Kung hindi nila pinayagan na pumasok yung mga sundalo dito, hindi magkakaroon ng massacre. Silang may ari, silang may ka, ano uh, authority na huwag papasukin kung ayaw nila. Kanila yan eh, private yan eh, private property yan eh. Pinapasok sampung truck na sundalo, dalawang APC, mga dalawang bombero ano. Such accountability, they say, is important now that Noynoy Aquino is running for president. For Capedring and the other victims of the massacre, it goes to the heart of the competence of Noynoy Aquino. Kung hindi niya kayang asikwasuhin itong Hacienda Lucita, paano niya pamumunuhan itong bansang Pilipinas kung hindi niya asikwasuhin itong Hacienda Lucita? Kaka, kukunti lang ito. Kaliit na problema. Hindi niya masolusyonan. Buong second district ng Tarlac, tinitignan kung ano yung nasaan yung kwalifikado ba siya pagka sa pagka-presidente. 
Kasi nga, ang tinitignan namin, three terms, nine years bale, na congressman siya ng second district ng Tarlac. Wala pa kaming nakikitang uh, nagagawa niya man lang. Ni kahit na isang tulay na maliit dito, wala man siyang napagawa. Kaya yung sinasabi niyang alisin yung korupsyon, eh ano yung ginagawa niya doon sa kanyang pagka-congressman noon na wala naman siyang ginawa dito sa kanyang distrito. Hil Palaganas was one of those injured during the violent dispersal. Like Kapedring, Kaboy had toiled for years in the Hacienda. Kaboy has mixed feelings about Noynoy Aquino running for president. Bakit uh, hindi pa niya linisin yung solar niya bago siya lilipat sa ibang solar? Kakunti lang yung iniingi namin. Tapos yung sinuklis namin, ibala. Kung yung inihiling namin sa kanya ibibigay, baka isa din kaming sumpuporta sa kanyang politika. Kagandang pakinggan kasi yung isang kababayan mo na... Teka, be... Sandali, hindi natin makakayanan eh dahil naalala natin yung mga kasama natin kasi eh. Mga nagbis ng buhay. They also question the sense of justice of Noynoy Aquino and his family. Para sa amin, Isang pangluloko, panlilinglang, at pagtalikod sa kanilang responsibilidad. At ang bottom line ng mga sinasabi ni Noy Noy na nagkocontradict ay ipagkait ang libu-libong lupain sa mga agricultural workers, sa mga pamilyang mag, uh, nagsasaka at naninirahan sa loob. Ang isyu ng Asyenda Luisita, hindi lamang usaping napakaliit kung paningin ni Noy Noy, yun ay napakaliit. Dahil ito ay usapin ng libo-libong mga magsasakang naghihirap at nagsasalamin ito ng buong uh, usapin ng reformang agraryo dito sa Pilipinas. So kung hindi map mapanghawakan ni Noy Noy at hindi niya mapapanindigan at hindi niya maipakita yung kanyang kakayahang resolbahin yung Asyenda Luisita, wala siyang kakayahang resolbahin yung malawakang isyu ng kawalan ng lupa sa buong Pilipinas. Noynoy Aquino has been riding on the legacy of his parents to boost his political ambition. Sa galang na aking mga magulang at sa gabay ng Diyos, gagawin ko ang lahat ng aking makakaya na pagsilbihan ang mahal nating inambayan. His father, Nino Aquino, played a key role in the Cojuancos acquisition of Hacienda Luisita from the Spaniards who owned it. But even he, the wonder boy of Philippine politics at the time, failed to convince his in-laws to give the land to farmers and tenants as required by the loan agreements between the Cojuancos and their creditors. First, the Cojuancos tried to go around the provision of the loan agreement, the one that says the land should be given to tenants by 1967, by claiming there were never any farmers or tenants on the Hacienda. Uh, we keep saying farmer beneficiaries because they were workers. Eh? There were never any tenants ever since we got there. Yung, of course, I wasn't around when they signed that agreement. But I am told by my elders that that was a provision. I think the entire provision says something like, e farmers, if any, or something of that nature. But you go back, puro yung, that was established in 1928 by Tabacarera. We got there in 1958. So from 1928 to 58, it had already been a corporate farm. So who is the, who is the farmer that it was being referred to? Yung definition kasi ng tenant, kung marapatin ano, una mayroong lupa, may may-ari ng lupa, may nagsasaka, mayroong agreement on the sharing ng ane o pagbabayad doon ng share sa, sa may-ari ng lupa ng mga manggagawa. So, by that definition, maka-qualify ngayon yung mga mag manggagawang bukid sa Hacienda Luisita as tenant. Kasi na-comply nila yung requisitos kung sino yung tenant. And that issue was already brought up by the Kohankos in the case that was filed by 
the government of the Republic of the Philippines, then under President Ferdinand Marcos, sa RTC na Manila. It was proven by the RTC of Manila na merong tenant. Kaya nga nag-order yung RTC of Manila at that time na ipamahagi na yung lupa sa mga manggagawang bukid dyan to comply with the condition of the loan. But unfortunately, dumating yung EDSA Revolution, and after the EDSA Revolution, naluklok si Cory Aquino bilang presidente, nangakong una niyang ipapamahagi sa mga, manggagawang, sa mga magsasaka yung Asyenda Luisita. And the Office of the Solicitor General then, headed by uh, Solicitor General Frank Chavez, ang siyang mismo nag-file ng motion sa Court of Appeals para i-withdraw ang kaso na isinampa ng gobyerno natin laban sa mga kuwang ko. So the issue of whether there was there were tenants sa Shenda Luisita has already been resolved by the court. Noy Noy's mother, the late President Corazon Aquino, even went so far as to water down and thus render ineffective the agrarian reform law that she later signed. It was her that allowed the insertion in the law of a provision on the so-called stock distribution option. Under the SDO, the farmers did not have to be given actual land. They were given shares of stocks. Dito sa stock distribution option at sa other forms of uh, modes of distribution, yung control pa rin na sa may-ari ng lupa. Lalo na sa korporasyon. Sa korporasyon kasi may mga board of directors yan. So ang board of directors ng corporation yung nagdidikta kung anong gagawin mo sa lupa. So yun yung pinili ng mga kuwang ko under Cory at that time. At yun yung in-implement sa Asyenda Luisita. Kaya panlilin lang yung sinasabi ng mga kuwang ko na co-owner yung mga manggagawang bukid sa lupa. At uh, sila ay may share doon sa 33, na 33%. At yung shares of stock ay binibigay na libre. Panlilin lang yun. So ang pinag-ugatan talaga dyan ng issue sa Asyenda Luisita at ng masaker yung stock distribution option, hindi pa yung dahil nag-strike. Kasi nag-strike itong mga manggagawang bukid dahil tinanggal sila ng mga kuwang ko. Bakit sila tinanggal? Kasi kumontra na sila sa stock distribution option. So nung makalaman ng mga kuwang ko na itong mga manggagawang bukid na ito, mga opisyalis na ito, itong nangunguna para ipawalang bisa yung SDO, kasi SDO lang yung legal na batayan ng mga kuwang ko para mapanghawakan yung kanilang control sa lupa. At ito ngayon, kinukontra ng mga manggagawang bukid sa pamamagitan ng kanilang mga lideres. Pinagtatanggal ngayon yung kanilang mga lideres. First, when we filed the petition for the revocation of stock distribution option sa DAR, that was year 2003, nag-file sila ng opposition. Then, series of dialogues went on at ayaw nila talagang ipamahagi sa yung lupa sa mga sa Asyenda Luisita. They are arguing na kukunti lang daw yung mga magsasaka na gustong i-revoke yung stock distribution option. But we proved them wrong. Kasi sa petition pa lang namin, almost 5,600 na yung mga manggagawang bukid na pumerma at gustong i-revoke yung stock distribution option. Second, nag-employ sila ng mga peking, mga manggagawang bukid peke kasi in the sense na hindi naman talaga sila doon nagtatrabaho sa asyenda. At nag-submit sila ng mga dokumento sa may Department of Agrarian Reform at ngayon din sa may Supreme Court na ang mga taong ito daw ay gustong ipagpatuloy yung stock distribution option. But we have a documents to show na ang iba dito ay mga tauan nila, iba dito mga barangay kapitan, ang iba dito ay patay. To the extent na ganun yung sila kadisperado. In 2005, the Department of Agrarian Reform determined that the SDO was a failure. It concluded that the SDO only made the lives of the workers and farmers worse. The Department of Agrarian Reform soon junked the SDO and ordered the distribution of Hacienda Luisita to its farmers and workers. But instead of following the order, the owners of Hacienda Luisita went to the Supreme Court, which in turn favored them by issuing a TRO against the Dar's distribution of Luisita land. Kung totoo yung buong kuhang ko na handa nilang ibigay yung Asyenda Luisita sa mga magsasaka, 
uh, regardless of the share of Noynoy, ito pwedeng sabihan ni Noynoy yung, yung kanyang pamilya just to show that he has political will to resolve this agrarian issue na i-withdraw na natin yung kaso sa Korte Suprema at uh, ibibigay yung lupa sa mga magsasaka. The Supreme Court's supposedly temporary restraining order has been in effect since 2006. The recent actions of Noynoy Aquino and his relatives indicate their intention not to part with what they consider as the family heirloom that is the Hacienda Luisita. So kung pera lang po pinag-uusapan dito, it would behoove us to just say, voluntary offer to sell it up. Ayos pa ako politically, wala nang binabating sa aking issue. But if we do that, no, these farmers, who farmer beneficiaries, who number 10,000, will be the ones dividing 4,500 hectares. Okay? Hindi ho duwagul yata in less than one hectare for a single individual to live on. Hindi siya issue na marami yung beneficiary yun kung konti lo yung lupa. Kasi ang may isang mode na pwedeng at ina-allow na moda ng pagdidistribute, ibigay mo sa korporasyon o sa kooperatiba ng mga magsasaka at ang kooperatiba ng magsasaka, yung bahalang mag-manage ng lupa. Sa Hacienda Luisita, may organization na dyan eh. May existing organization yung Ulwo at yung Ambala. So kung pwedeng ibigay na sa Ulwo at Ambala, ang, ang Ulwo at Ambala yung mag-manage ng lupa. The point is, dapat yung lupa kasi hindi na nakatali sa kamay ng mga kuwang ko. Noynoy vehemently objected to the Supreme Court's decision allowing President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo to appoint the Chief Justice during her remaining days in power. While he depicted himself on this issue as a protector of democracy, a far bigger reason, according to critics, is that whoever becomes the next Chief Justice will have to contend with the High Court's TRO. Clearly, Noynoy Aquino needed a Supreme Court that is favorable to him and his family. In the heat of the campaign, and as he faced endless questions about Hacienda Luisita, Noynoy Aquino announced that he would distribute the land within the next five years. But his cousin, Fernando Cojuanco, the chief operating officer of Hacienda Luisita, refuted him. In an interview with the New York Times, he virtually called Noynoy Aquino a liar. Hacienda Luisita is an issue that is very sensitive to the Aquino family and therefore any declaration that is made by Noy Noy Aquino categorically, categorically with regard to uh, uh, giving up the Hacienda Luisita should be taken with a grain of salt and should be taken only as an, a campaign uh, pronouncement rather than a, a real sincere uh, commitment. Kung gusto nilang ipamahagi yung lupa, huwag nang hintayin yung four years. Iatras nila yung apila nila sa Supreme Court, ibalik na yung lupa sa mga tao. Huwag nating sabihin ipamahagi dahil kinangkam nila yan, ibalik na nila yan. Siguro, hindi naman nila madideny na uh, marami na yung nagbis ng buhay dyan para sa lupa. For Capidring and many of the farmers and workers in Hacienda Luisita, the struggle for land is a matter of life and death. Hindi kami naniniwalang ipamimigay pamamagi ang lupa ng Asyenda Luisita. Kung gusto niyang kumandidato at kami sumuporta sa kanya, pamigay na yung lupa dahil ang lupa ay amin. <tinyo>